How you guys doing today? Good. good. So you guys are reading pretty good? I'm not going to use the microphone. Okay. So the title of my talk is What's the Why and Half to Success? So when I look in the room and I think about, you know, all the young minds we have here, I was once in this position. I was, you know, part of this program and some great mentors, Dr. Donald, Dr. Perkins, Dr. Rollett, uh, helped me, you know, through the process. So what I really want to do is I want to take a step back and look through six or seven key rules that kind of helped me get to ride today, kind of my success story. Now this is tailored to me, my own individual personal success. However, to understand that success, I kind of want to take you through my thought process. So to give you a little bit about me, my educational background, I went to Prairie View Indiana University, uh, my high school engineering degree from there. I ran track, I was a cross country runner as well as an 800 collegiate runner. I attended here, University of Nebraska Lincoln, graduated in 2010 with a degree in industrial management system. We went on to the University of Nebraska, I'm sorry, University of Texas, Arlington, under the direction of Dr. Eric Jones, I pursued my doctorate in industrial engineering, industrial manufacturing system. Uh, I'm currently completing my MBA from Washington State in marketing, and I'll get into why I did that in a little bit. Um, again, you know, these are some of the things that I've accomplished up to this point. Um, I'm also a NASA Harry Jenkins fellow, so I had some opportunity to work with NASA. NASA paid for my doctorate degree. It was a very, very unique experience, and I can answer that as well if you guys have any questions. As well as a Apple Peace Loan minority. You guys familiar with Apple Peace Loan? I heard from Okay. Okay. And back in 2008, 2009, I did some research with Dr. Rowlett and Dr. Jones, and they awarded me the uh, Mid American Transportation Doctoral Fellowship of the Year. Again, so. This is what we do in industry. This is what we call a mini me. You know, it's a snapshot of kind of, you know, you and what you do, what makes you, what makes you up. Uh, I spent some time in Belgium when I first joined Mars Food. They sent me over to Europe. I lived in Belgium for six months. And my story here is geared to how did I cope with that? So my seven rules are how did I deal with my time in Europe? Me by myself, I'll go there by myself alone. You know, culture change. I don't speak Dutch. You know, no, I don't speak Dutch. I spoke survival. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I had to. I had to. You know, believe in myself, which kind of triggered in other areas of my personal, my personal growth in life. So again, you know, a couple things about me. Uh, I kind of went through that. So what I enjoy doing, you know, my studying and working. Uh, I love working out. I love reading uh, non-related STEM books. Me and Dr. Jones have a, a reading contest who can read the most non-related engineering books. <laughs> uh, I do look up the word for the day, every day. And the word of the day is uh, euphonium, which means a funeral song. So I try to use that in a, I try to use the word of the day every day. That's my one good day for myself. Uh, do's or don'ts. So do always challenge the norm. Do always push others and yourself. You, you have to do that. that. You have to be able to push yourself. You have to be able to push others. And don't have any regrets. Because even in bad situations, you learn something good. Let's get started. So rule number one, trust yourself. Okay? So what do I mean by trusting yourself? So a lot of you guys here are at the undergraduate level. You have dreams and ambitions of going to uh, pursue your higher education. Some of you may want to go be doctors. Some of you may want to be lawyers. Some of you may want to be entrepreneurs. I'm not sure. But we all have dreams, right, and goals. So the first thing to that is trust in yourself. And the reason this is important because this is the foundation of all the other principles I want to talk about today. You know, when you believe in your dream, you have to believe in your dreams when no one else believes in them except you. That's, that's key number one because you have to control where you want to go in your life. Only you. You control. And a great quote from William Shakespeare is, you know what we are. But we don't we do not know what we can be. So we know where we are today, but if you continue to progress and do what you want to do as far as learning and developing yourself, the sky's the limit. And I learned that here and it started here for me in the uh, University of Nebraska. Okay. So always trust yourself. Rule number one, trust yourself. Rule number two, break some rules. You know, uh, Dr. Jones and Dr. Perkins used to always get on me about this. I used to always try to keep everything 
in a textbook, textbook form. And then sometimes you can't do it. Sometimes you have to think outside the book, right? Research requires you to think outside the box. I had the opportunity to work with Dr. Jones and Dr. Perkins on RFID research. We were trying to put sensors inside of the body, so in vivo applications inside of the body. And I would try to go to books and books and books and books, and Dr. Jones would always tell me the solution that we're looking for is not in the book. That's why it's research. We're trying to be innovative. So you have to find ways to, you have to break some rules. I mean, you can't rely on books to look for all the answers. Some of the answers are not there, okay? Um, Jimmy D also has a quick great quote that I like here. Yeah, and by the way, every slide for me has a quote. So you'll see as we go through, all my slides have quotes. I cannot change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust myself to reach my final destination. And what this really saying is, you know, you're gonna come across some things in your journey from a personal standpoint, a growth standpoint, that is gonna be difficult to overcome. And that's when you have to really, really persevere. Uh, for me, prime example, you know, I'm just going to show this with you guys. How many of you guys are familiar with the GRE, the LSAT, <laughs> GMAT? Yeah. I took that test four times. <laughs> I took that test four times. And that's, that's my own personal story that I want to share with you guys. But I want you to understand that it's not always the fastest nor the strongest of you, you have to be able to persevere. So going back to rule number one, which is what? Trust yourself. Trust yourself. You have to trust yourself. And if I'm sweating, I'm not nervous, it's hot. I'm so, <laughs> just saying, I'm not nervous, it's hot. <laughs> so, rule number one, trust yourself. Okay, rule number two, break some rules. Remember those two as we go on. Rule number three, don't be afraid to fail. Oh man, this kind of relates to rule one and two. You cannot be afraid to fail. You have to have the courage to act despite the fear. A great example of this for me is when I completed my dissertation. I had a statistics professor from Georgia Tech, uh, Dr. Victoria Chin, and uh, I wasn't great in statistics. I lost it. My background was in electrical engineering. So going from electrical engineering to industrial engineering was, in my mind, two completely different areas of engineering science. So we took the comprehensive exam, and uh, I barely missed the statistics. And I had to, fortunately, I didn't have to come back and retake the class. She let me continue with my DOE uh, project that I was working on, and she kind of let that subside for my requirements. <coughs> so well, I say that to say you, you, have to be, you have to have the courage to act despite the fear. Some things just going to be tough. I mean, like, it's going to be tough. Uh, there's no way around it. Uh, but you have to be able to find within yourself, control the situation, control your emotions, and have the utmost confidence in what you do and why you're here. That's very important. So when you come to obstacles, you have to understand why are you doing what you do? Why are you doing it? Okay. Why are you pursuing this bachelor? Why do you want a master's degree? Why do you want a PhD? Why, why, why? You have to be a man. So one of the guys I mentored asked me one day, and I put it here, he asked, what if I fail? And I found this quote and said, what if I fail? Oh, my daughter, what if you fly? You don't know what's going to happen. You can stick through. You may be through. <clears throat> but you have to be able to stick through. And I challenge you, you know, there's been a time, been a time that Prairie Man at University where uh, I'm giving you some of my personal failures because I want you to be able to use those in your own personal experience because it gives humility. You know, you have to be able to be able to, to, to build humility and all this, and that's sometimes can be difficult. But I had a professor at, at Prairie Man at University. Dr. Matthew Sadaku. I was graduating uh, 2009, and uh, make a long story short, I passed the class with Barrett, and he pulled me in, and he, he shared this with me, um, quote at the bottom. Perseverance is filling 19 times and succeeding on 20, I never forget. Uh, as I told you, I ran collegiate track. Uh, I was alone across the country running up 12 miles a day, you know, and we have, all we could do was persevere. You know how your body goes through different cycles. You get tired and you get energy again, you get tired again. That's what we went through. So persevere, persevere, persevere. You have to be able to Okay. Rule number four, ignore the naysayers. How many people, you know, have been in situations where, you know, you had a dream or you shared your dream with someone and so you can't do it? 
That's all you need. So that's you, you have to be able to embrace it because it's not for them to see. They, they should if they don't see your dream, that's okay. It's your dream. Okay? You all the person that needs to confirm your dream is you. Now what you can do in the process is get good people in your corner. I mean we have great faculty members here. I mean great great leaders. You guys come from great institutions. A lot of great minds here. So the key to all of this is to get someone in your corner who supports you, who can nourish your thought process, and help you get to where you want to get to in life. I can get to where I am without the help of everybody in this room. I'm just going to be completely honest with you and my family. You know, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Uh, you know, I'm, I had dreams, aspirations to, you know, do inspirations to do greater things. I found the right people, and they helped me get to where I want to get to in life. The key to this is to never stop learning. Okay, you can never stop learning. And I've committed myself to continuous learning in life. And that's what all that's what I challenge all of you guys to do. You know, some people say, you know, I got my bachelor's degree, I want to go work. That's fine. Okay? If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But don't forget to continue to grow in some aspect of your of your life. Because to, to not grow is to remain the same. Okay. Uh, Another quote I have here is, don't ever doubt yourself or waste a second of your life. It's too short and you're too special. Everyone in this, in this room is here for a reason. You guys are part of a pre, of a very prestigious program, in my opinion. And I believe that you all have chosen to come here to learn about research, to meet great faculty mentors, and to build and collab with people like myself and your speakers, as well as other people from other institutions. So take advantage of that. That's an opportunity that you don't you do not want to waste. Rule number five, embrace hard work. <clears throat> embrace hard work. You have to be willing to work hard to get where you want to in life. Whatever it is you want to do. I don't know what you want to do. I know what I want to do, but what do you want to do? You have to protect it. Okay. The reason I break the reason I say that is because my advisor, Dr. Jones, we argue, not now, but we argue, he said, Kevin, why do you want to pursue the NBA? Why are you pursuing it? You got a doctor, why are you going back to school to get the NBA? Like school. And I told Dr. Jones, well, that's because I have ambitions of owning my own engineering consulting firm once I quit my, my PE license. He said, well, you can do that without me. And, and some, in some cases, he is correct. But for me, it was a personal growth for me to see it, if I could do it. If I could meet the challenge of going and complete my PhD, going back and getting an MBA. And what that's doing for me is it's showing me how I can connect the two. So being a hybrid between the hard engineering sciences and the marketing or the selling of a product. In my line of work, I make rice, I produce rice currently. We make it, but also I want to know how to sell and maximize my sales. So I work with the sales team and the marketing team on how to do that. But when I'm getting these meetings and we talk about market segmentation and target market analysis, I have to be able, I have to be able to understand what that means. Or if we start talking about statistics or regression, I can relate to that as well. Um, so one of the quotes that I have here is when I completed my doctorate degree, you know, I you know made out of John talk about this, but this is what I came up with. When adversity calls, fake the perseverance answer. So there's been some trialing times, you know, as far as not doing my work. Uh, but it made me a better person who I am today. And I'm devoting myself to continuous learning, continuous growth. And I advise you guys to do the same. Now, the last rule, give something back. So when I say give something back, what, before I go into detail, what do you guys think that means? When I say give something back, what does that mean? Uplift. OK. What else? What else? I'm yes. saying uplift. Okay. Good things you come. Yeah. So there are many different ways to give something back, right? So you guys are in this. You guys are sitting in this room. I was once in the same seat. So what am I doing today? I'm trying to give something back. So always remember where you started. Don't forget where you're trying to go. Never forget where you came. That's the most important thing. So I look at this. Remember, you were once a person that needed counsel. You guys need counsel. I was once a person. How do I get to graduate school? What's the process? You guys heard a great uh, speaker at lunch. 
she went through the in and outs of how to, how to get into graduate school, what network she needs to develop, and how to move that needle moving forward. That's very, very important. I hope you guys took great notes. So pay, pay it forward and all that you do, and I guarantee you, you will never, you will never, never regret what you've done for yourself as well as others. And I challenge you to be a better person tomorrow than you were today. Thanks for your time.
I went to Purdue immediately. Like, I didn't have a summer. I went there for a STEM program. But I did that because I got scholarship money and I also was able to take um, 11 hours worth of my um, courses. So when, once I started in the fall, I was already 11 hours ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I did some internships while I was at Prairie View. I did um, Harris County Flood Control District. Um, there's a two next to that because I did one in the summer and they liked me so much they brought me back again. So I did two of those there. Um, then I did a partnering internship between Prairie View and UNL with um, Dr. Eric Jones and his RFID lab. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification, in case you guys didn't know. And um, he, he worked this pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm grateful for it. Perkins is with me, yeah, we're not all. I learned so much here, and I'll be able to show you guys later how much, you know, everything you learn you might come back around so that you pay attention to it. I was able to take the information I learned here at UNL and then take it back to PV and then create an RFID lab there and we'll test and stuff and teach another student stuff. So, I learned RFID really good. That is the picture on the left is a picture from my first internship. I'm the one that's on the left. No, that's the same work. <laughs> so after PV, of course, I got a research assistantship. Bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> the out of state visa is not So I got a research assistantship. Um, things I did during my assistantship was I did some analyzing for driver behaviors, you know, what they did at stoplights, um, stop bars, things like that. Um, some Excel stats, statistical work. That was tough. Um, everybody probably will take some research methods for um, probability and statistics. So, Try to stay with your math because it'll come back, especially for engineering. Um, and then I also was able to be um, one of the startup guys for a club called Rose Girls and Race Cars that's still going on here today down at Color Middle School down the road where we teach um, middle school kids um, STEM things so they can be into the math and maybe go into engineering in early. And yeah, we was teaching them some stuff with GIS on the campus trying to find stuff. And that's my colleague Scott Sorensen. We were building something that I thought was good fun. So I had a lot of fun here. Mm -hmm. um, my journey, my professional career. Um, once I graduated from UNL, I did a little summer gig in Houston for a consulting firm, um, being an associate engineer, civil engineering firm. Um, I got to see the different sides of being a consultant. Um, I, this is my personal story. I like where I am right now. Now I work for the government, for the city of Dallas. It's two different worlds. I was working for somebody who was trying to get contracts. Now I'm working for somebody who gives out the contracts. <laughs> so I like where I'm at now. I'm so happy this is my first day of work. I know I'm going to work. That's my first day of work picture. I'm just, just happy and grateful. So important tools. Motivation and dedication. These two go hand in hand. If you want to be where you want to be, you got to be motivated. Because nobody's going to do it for you. You got to be the one to get up in the morning and take a set of class. And I was in Nebraska, you guys know they never cancel class. Because of snow? Or rain? So, I was motivated. Because you to be If I was in grad school and then I didn't make it work, I was going back home with my parents. And, and I, that's not what <laughs> So, motivation, dedication. I have a little story about my next bullet point, um, initiate. Where I am today, I believe it's because of one conversation. Just one. I initiated. I was at Harris County Flood Control. I did my second internship. And I was like, this job is really easy. And I think I could have did it out of high school. I want more. I saw Dr. Perkins walking across the parking lot. I said, hey, Doc, what are you doing this summer? What's going on? I want to work out my internship. What do you got going? Boom, that answer. She said, I have RFID going right now. I need you to go get smart on this. That's her phrase, go get smart. So she gave me a pen, RFID. I wrote up about it. I saw that I understood it. I liked it. From that point on, I got an internship with Dr. Jones. I brought back PD. I got paid for it. And I got a full ride to you and him. So just one conversation. You guys got to initiate that. We have all these smart minds around us. All this money around us. 
you gotta go out there and get it. If they don't know, how will they know? They're not monitoring it. So. The last one is support. Now, I think on Wednesday, one of the doctors asked, um, who's doing this alone? And the only white one person raised hand and said, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
So this is just an outline of basically what I'm going to talk about, research I did as an undergrad, um, internships I did, and what I'm currently doing as a grad student as well. So where I'm from. Originally, I was born in Mexico, in Monterrey, which is down here, and I moved to McAllen, Texas, where I did all of my basically school. I did elementary, middle school, high school, and um, after I graduated high school, I decided to apply for um, University of, now the Rio Grande Valley, but it used to be the University of Texas Pan American, which is in um, Edinburgh, Texas. So while I was there, um, I started off by doing research. I was already a junior when I started doing research. When I first entered school, I was, in a way, I was not really taking it serious. I was just kind of like going through the flow, whatever. Um, my, basically, um, parents' background ed education, um, they had very low education, so I was unfortunate not to really have someone to go and talk to and like about school. So I kind of also at the same time used that as my motivation to um, get something better for my own self. So I started doing research with one of my professors on a structural health mon monitoring system, and this was just to um, reduce failures in bridges. This is what our lab used to look like there. So this is a model of a bridge, and these sensors here measure things like temperature and strain, and are basically showing you deflections as vehicles are going across bridges. An example of this is, an is the Arsenal Bridge, which is located um, in Illinois and connects to Iowa. So basically what, basically what happens is all of these sensors here are connected to this um, little house, and it shows you any failures that are possibly going to happen. After I did that research, which was in the year of 2012 to 2013, I interned for the Texas Department of Transportation that summer. So I was located in Encino, Texas. If any of you are familiar with South Texas, mm -hmm. there is nothing in Encino. <laughs> <laughs> so I was stationed there for just that summer, and I was looking at basically pavement and how they were laying that pavement in the intersections. After I came back to school, this was in 2000, sorry, of 2013, 2014 school year. I did um, research with another professor and basically on pavement performance. And this is a database by the Federal Highway Administration that you, anybody could access. So I was looking basically at just a pavement performance close to Edinburgh, Texas, probably about 20 minutes north of that area. And basically I was looking at rutting, IRI, and then I applied for another program, which was a collaboration with this university. So I got to travel here to Nebraska during the summer of 2014, and I was doing um, research on vehicle violations, as you can see here. Very <laughs> bad. So then I just basically collected data and yeah, watching these vehicles as they're going where they're not supposed to be. This is when I enjoyed, I really enjoyed working here, and I decided I wanted to come to grad school at this university. I love the program. Um, after that summer, I still had one more semester to go, so I went back to school and I did more research, and this was basically a collabor collaboration with the Illinois Center for Transportation, and I just did basically like a statistical analysis with aggregates. And um, this is just an example of what I did. And that later turned into a publication this year, actually. So for my extracurricular activities that I was in when I was an undergrad, um, I was in a lot of these associations. Um, I did conferences, basically kind of trying to develop my social skills, networking, presenting. I used to hate presenting in public. Absolutely hated it. I would fear it. But now I kind of like to put myself in the position because it's something that you are going to have to do once you start working or when you're in grad school as well. So why pursuing masters? For starters, intellectual growth. As an undergrad, I only took one transportation course. Now as a grad student, I have broadened my knowledge. I I learned so much more that I, than I have previously learned. 
Um, I have also learned how to use different softwares that unfortunately I didn't get to use as an undergrad. And some of these softwares are things that companies look for whenever they want to hire you. Um, all that leads into job opportunities. So you know some softwares that jobs are looking for, like, hey, I'll hire you. Free education, you can get your research assistantship that Quentin yeah. referred to. And yeah, out-of-state tuition is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, detailed coursework, you get to learn more, and you'll probably have starting, a higher starting salary when you start working. So these are just some of the achievements I have done so far. Um, I mentored the next year's UTCRS students, which were this summer. Um, when I started, I was the first generation to come here. So these students were second generation, and I kind of just showed them the ins and outs of what they need to do and how to go about their research. I was fortunate enough to meet Secretary of Transportation, Anthony Box. I also um, presented in a conference with IHEAT, and this was in Pittsburgh. I attended an ARIMA conference, which was in Minneapolis. So another thing about grad school, you travel, which is nice. You go to different states, to conferences. And I am currently working on my thesis, which has to do with um, calculating the maximum friction on vehicles and I was awarded Student of the Year from my old transportation center back in Edinburgh. So this is my contact information if any of you want to reach me on how to get to grad school, how you want to apply here, or anything like that. You're more than welcome to email me, call me, whatever. <laughs>